Happy Labor Day, everybody. You're watching the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show here on KOXC. I'm Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach and Athletic Director Sammy Burnett. Been a busy and happy last few days for you, Coach. You bet. A lot better this weekend <laughs> than it was last weekend, for sure. Well, of course, coming off a big win over Marble Falls Friday night, a game where basically you dominated all three phases from start to finish. Yeah, uh, you know, I was really proud of our kids. We had a bad taste in our mouth because we really felt like and know that we gave the Wiley game away. I had multiple opportunities to win that game, put ourselves in a bind with some mistakes that we made early, and uh, we were never able to go, you know, get past that. But our kids focused hard all week, worked extremely hard, still believe that they're a good team and could be successful. I went up against a team that was ranked 17th at the state at the time and just dominated in all three phases of the game. You know, it starts with our special teams on kickoff or kick return, uh, set up a great field position for us on the opening kickoff when Junior pinned the ball down inside the five, they had to return it. And uh, we got a good field position, you know, started the game with field position right there. Defense did an outstanding job, played physical, played low, played assignment football, very disciplined, we gave our, our offense many opportunities to, to have the ball and score. And, uh, you know, our goal was going into that game, every possession that we had, we felt our possessions would be limited that we uh, were opportunistic and scored points, whether it was a field goal or where, whether it was a touchdown on every possession, and our kids did that. So uh, throughout the course, you know, you come in the second half, we're up, we could get lax, but, you know, going to the locker room, I told our kids, you know, play like a champion, play like a winner. That half's over, you got to go win another half. Uh, we came out, set the tone on kickoff. Defense got on the field, got us a three and out. And offense put the ball in the end zone, set the tone for the second half, and just, you know, sort of cruised from there and just had fun and, and played physical football and executed. A lot of coaches say the most improvement you'll see in the seasons from week one to week two, it certainly looked like that was the case for you all Friday night. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got to improve. You know, we, we faced a Burnett team this week that, that dropped a game to Lano as a close ball game, and they could have won that game. And, and I know they're going to be fighting to try to get back in the win column just like we did. Uh, we got to keep climbing up that ladder, taking extra uh, rung on that ladder every week and get better so that by the time we get to district where we need to be, and of course it doesn't get any easier. You know, you got Burnett who's a, played a real close game with us last year. Uh, the Jones kid for them, sort of their guy. Uh, that's Coach Jones' nephew. Uh, he's a dominant player on both sides of the ball. We got to know where he's at at all times. And then you look at going into, if you want to look in the further schedule, you got Waco. Uh, you got a very strong Glenrose team that's picked to, you know, get out of their region and go play for it. And uh, they're rolling right now. They're a very good football team. Uh, then you got uh, Waco Conley that just knocked off uh, Waco La Vega, who's ranked in the top five uh, this week. And then you, of course, you got Steamville that. Had a little barn burner with Everman, uh, scored on the last play of the game to beat them 62-61. to 61. So it doesn't get any easier for us. We know that. Uh, we just need to keep doing what we do and keep getting better and, and uh, focusing on us and not beating ourselves. And we feel like we can play with anybody and, and get prepared for that district run. Um, going back to Friday night's game, I know on defense one of the things you wanted to see was better tackling. And it looked like uh, Marble Falls didn't break hardly any tackles Friday No, I mean, you know, I, here's the thing. Our coaches always coach, man. They're always out there trying to get them to become masters of craft or teach them details or teach them fundamentals. And here's the thing. Our kids are soaking it up. They're listening to it, and they're trying to go out there and apply it. They feel like they have a lot of potential. But as we all know, potential is a great thing unless you don't use it. And our kids are choosing to use it. They're choosing to be different. They're choosing to go out there and get better every week and just focus in their practice. And like I said before, one of the best things that's happened for us is uh, we're going two sides of the ball right now, or one side of the ball, I'm sorry. Our offensive guys are playing offense. Our defensive guys are playing defense. Uh, we got a couple guys banged up. We may have to start changing that just a little bit. But the, having the ability to not have to call your JB over and let your varsity go good on goods, which is our one offense against our one defense, and they're not brother-in-law on each other is what we call it. They're not laying on each other. They're making each other better. They're holding each other accountable. And in return, our JB's getting to do the same thing, and they're becoming better too. So uh, that iron sharpening iron mentality has, has helped us a lot, even to a point where our kids are starting to come and say, Coach, it's easier in the game because we're having to go against our offensive line or our defensive line, and it's making us better. So, uh, you know, we really worked on that hard. Our kids are focused. I mean, I give all credit to them. They're, they, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But our kids are drinking it up. I mean, they want to be good. They want to be one of the top-tier teams in the state, and they're working really hard to do that. And like I said, we're on track to do that. We just got to make sure that we're focused enough and, we're able to execute and, and go out there and not step on our own feet. And when we do that, I think we show proof that we can play with them better. All right. Um, <clears throat> offensively, of course, you lost Jason Jackson early in the game, but I thought Ike did a good job spreading the ball around, and the other receivers did a good job kind of stepping up. 
Yeah, he stumbled a little bit early, a couple of passes that we had open that he overthrew. You know, that's just slowing down. But more once he got in the groove, you know, reading the run plays and keeping the ball, he made some dynamic runs himself, started read some, made some really good reads and uh, delivered the ball where he needed to. I give credit to our receivers out there blocking on the perimeter uh, and knowing what they're supposed to do. And then, you know, blocking downfield on the run game or offensive line I thought was pretty dominant. Uh, but, you know, I still working on his pocket presence, what to do in the pocket all the time, and that comes with time. But, man, he's a kid that just keeps growing and growing every week. And by the time it's done, I think he's going to be a star. And, uh, you know, we lost Jason Jackson early. Uh, still don't know what his uh, diagnosis is. Uh, he didn't practice today. I uh, don't know if he'll play this week. But, you know, the next man up, and Jordan uh, Nickerson and, and Case Markham, both did an outstanding job of jumping in there and filling that role, and it was like we didn't miss a beat, and that's what we want. So, like I said, all that goes to show, you know, how much our kids want it and how hard they're working and how much they want to be successful. So uh, we're continuing to grow with those younger guys that now have two games of varsity experience. They're starting to feel comfortable with what they're doing. They understand the pace of the game and the physicality of it, and they're matching it. So uh, we're growing, 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 and that's what we need to do until we get the district. Yeah, You talked earlier in the season about the offensive line maybe being a little behind, coming along a little later. Uh, gave up very few negative plays Friday night. Yeah, I mean, you know uh, – we didn't really get behind the chains a couple of times. I think we had a procedure penalty that put us behind the chains, but then, you know, they responded with a great play. You know, we were a second and long a couple of times, and we turned out to make it a third and short and wind up getting first downs, but they're, they're starting to gel. They're starting to understand what we're doing. They're starting to understand what they're doing and what we need to do if they make an adjustment or if they stem or if they come out an even front or they come out an odd front and they're communicating well. So the, you're starting to see that growth, that offensive line. And once they get to their potential and they're – working as that machine and all cylinders are running, uh, they're going to be pretty strong. Um, also on special teams, Junior Martinez kicks two field goals, makes all his extra points, and uh, another solid outing from him. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he, you talk that guy was using his uh, – Coach Herman was using his timeouts to, to freeze uh, uh, Junior on that field goal. And when I told him in the huddle, I was like, they don't understand. He has ice water in his veins. That boy doesn't get upset or doesn't get concerned or worried about anything. He's confident in what he does. I went out there and kicked some great extra points, which are huge for us. You know, look at the LSU game last night. You know, they marched down and score with hardly any time on the clock and get the extra point blocked. They, our kids understand the importance of that extra point and how much it can mean in a game. Uh, you look back in 19 when we played uh, Alvarado and, and uh, we missed the first extra point and wound up being down a point, having to drive the field and kick the field goal late to win that ball game. So sometimes we take that extra point for granted. A touchdown is only worth six. It's that seventh point that counts, and Junior's solid in that. I never have any doubt in my mind that he's going to go out there and execute. You know, other than the two kickoffs that he kicked out of bounds, you know, he had a perfect night. And, uh, you know, our special teams, the way we covered, uh, we kept, I think, the best uh, line to gain on a kickoff return was a 30-yard line, and that's because we pooched the ball and the kid fair caught it. So I give credit to the special teams and the fact that they're taking it serious, and that's a phase of the game that we always have to win, and uh, we've done that so far. Now, Friday night, wrapped up a sweep over Marble Falls. The freshman and JV also got wins Thursday. That's right. You know, our freshman went out and played, I thought, it was a really good Marble Falls team and wound up just persevering and just playing hard and, and believing in themselves and had a good mixture of plays and did great offense uh, defensively. They shut them out 19-0, to zero, and then our JV went right along with them. And here's the thing about that JV. They're a good group of kids. they got great numbers. They don't have tons of size, and they don't have just these standout guys anywhere, but they believe in each other, and they've always played as a team. And that, that group has grown and grown and grown over the course of their career from junior high where they didn't win many games. They come to high school last year, they won six games, and now they're off to a 2-0 and start beating Marble Falls 34 to nothing. I mean, and just totally dominant. But, again, it's a testament to those kids and their desire to be different and to be good and, you know, put us back on the map. Uh, everybody in our program from top to bottom wants to win and they want to be successful. And if you have a group of kids that wants to learn and wants to be successful and they want to work, uh, you can give that food to them and they'll eat it. But if you don't, if you have kids that don't have the right attitude or they're not, they're not being, uh, they're, they're wanting to be more lazy and not wanting to put in the work, then you're not going to be successful. But from top to bottom at the high school right now with our freshmen all the way to our varsity, our kids are working extremely hard. They're listening to their coaches and they're starting to receive the rewards uh, from being the hours that they spend in the weight room uh, to going out there and putting game plan in in the spring to applying that in the in the summer and our seven on seven and out starting to reveal itself in in. Uh, at all levels at, at, during the football season. But I couldn't be any prouder of our sub-varsities. 
Uh, they don't get a lot of credit a, a lot, you know. Those are guys that are trying to grow into themselves and find themselves and, and find their maturity, and, and they're just really doing a good job. So really pleased with them. Our combined team went over to Comanche, played another JV team or, or whatever, and uh, they dropped that game 20-8. to 8. But, man, I'm really proud of them. Uh, you know, they're getting to play those games. They're getting to get more experience. And if not, if we didn't have that team, they'd be staying on the sideline, not getting much playing time. But I believe if you're good enough to practice, you're good enough to play. So everybody in our program is having an opportunity to play and to sharpen their skills and to get better. Uh, and I'm really pleased with the entire program. You know, we, we did pick up a game this week I want to mention. Before I forget, well, we picked up a game with that combined team with Eastland. So they'll travel to Eastland at 5 o'clock on Thursday. And their schedule is full now. So I'm excited about that for that combined team as well. Okay. And, um uh, freshman and JV are both here? Yeah, freshman and JV are here against uh, Burnett. That will start at 5 and 6.30 at Gordwood Stadium. And, again, our combined team will go to Eastland and play at 5 o'clock on Thursday. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some of the other sports and results we had over the last few days. Uh, cross country, man, what an awesome meet we had. We had over 400 participants in 30, uh, uh, 26 teams, man. Uh, Coach uh, uh, Parrish and Coach Parker, they got to get those two P's out, mm -hmm. ran that meet well. They had a lot of help with with Coach Hortz and, and Coach uh, Mosqueda and, and just getting it done. And it was an awesome meet. Got to go out and see our kids run. Our girls did it well again, you know, led by Sydney uh, Wyndham, who finished 10th, and then Kate Tennell finished 13th. Uh, they finished 5th overall as a team. And then on the boys' side, Luke Gray finished 11th, and uh, Caleb Nelson finished 20th. And, you know, Luke went over to, to Jim Ned and finished, I think there was 200 kids over there, and he finished, I think, 18th. And then he comes back to our meet and runs over here and finishes 11 with 400 participants. So a good showing by our boys and girls in cross country, excited about them when they get to district and what they're going to be able to do. But those coaches are working hard, and, and uh, I'm really pleased with them, and I thought it was a very well-ran meet. Okay. So what else do we have going on this week? We've got uh, volleyball tomorrow at home against Gatesville. Those will be two 5 o'clock games in both gyms for the JV and the freshmen. And then, of course, the varsity will play at 6 o'clock. Uh, against Gatesville. I have, don't know much about Gatesville. I haven't seen them, but uh, an opportunity to sort of test the wares against a used-to-be district opponent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess anything else you want to mention, Coach? I don't know anything about tickets yet. Okay. I'll find that out tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, don't know how Bernard will be on Friday. Of course, if you're coming to our game uh, for those sub-varsity games, it doesn't matter if it's junior high, which will kick it off on Tuesday, or uh, if it's the JV freshman games, combined games that are on Thursdays, you can always get tickets at the gate. Uh, we are, we're still uh, do, uh, we don't pre-sell uh, sub RC tickets, so you can always go to the game at our facilities and, and get in the game just by paying your five or three dollars or whatever it costs to get you in there. Uh, when it comes to us traveling, like Eastland, as soon as I get that information from Eastland, I'll let you know by Wednesday, and then of course going to Burnett, we'll have information again on how they want to do their tickets, but we're, it's up to them. And everybody seems to be out on more our Labor Day, so uh, uh, we'll have that information hopefully on, by Wednesday. Okay, sounds good. Uh, well, it's Monday. you want to give everybody a NASCAR report? Well, I'm saddened. You know, they had the longest race of the year at uh, Darlington, and uh, it's 500 miles, and my boy just dominated the whole time. Got 20 laps or so, 21 laps, 16 laps, whatever it is left. Comes out of the pits and first again, ready to finish that race, and somehow along tootling around the track his motor blew up so lost him and lost martin truex and lost uh kevin harvick and chase Elliott. kevin harvick's car just started just caught on fire and started burning up so i don't know what's going on with those cars that next gen car they're trying to figure those out but i was all fired up about my guy winning first playoff game first playoff race going to advance to the second round and his car blew up on a dang caution so it was uh eric jones won that summer Came from the back. Star, how did your people do? Late 17th. Yeah, he struck. But he was three laps down. Yeah, one yeah, he struck. His car was messed up the yeah, whole night. Is, so yeah, yeah. It is a long race, but, you know, how about that LSU-Florida State game? Pretty crazy finish. Pretty crazy finish. Those extra points, man, they're important. Mm -hmm. They're and, important. And, and field and punts. And, yeah. And field goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Special <laughs> teams. You know, it's funny. It doesn't matter what level you're at. Everybody's going to make those mistakes. Yeah, yeah. If yep. LSU had any kind of special team game last night, they wouldn't have to be handled. Yep, it takes three phases. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I preach that to our kids, and it's it's not nice to see someone lose because it was, it's nice to see our kids see it and talk about it going, hey, they lost the game because they missed a field goal. That helps them understand those are important. So it takes all three phases. All right. Anything else today, Coach? Well, I'll just make 
Sherbert thank those that make this show possible. Of course, Auto Glass Magic, Burner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Von Young, Dr. Pepper Bonding Company, Ever Jones Investments, Hendrick Medical, Howie Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Heartland Funeral Home, Landmark Life, MC Bank, Painter Johnson, Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Wilder Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willie's Tees. All right. Join us again Wednesday when we'll talk a little more about the Burnett Bulldogs. This has been the KOXE Railway Lions Coaches Show here on KOXE, KOXE.com, the KOXE app, and the KOXE Facebook pages. Happy Labor Day, Brownwood. <laughs>